in the bigger debate about the lockdowns, we are finally starting to see some decisive data on their effectiveness. Our next story is from nationalreview.com. Stats hold a surprise. Lockdowns may have had little effect on COVID-19 spread. Yeah. Data suggest mandatory lockdowns exacted a great cost with a questionable effect on transmission. In 1932, Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandis famously called the state's laboratories of democracy. Different states can test out different policies and they can learn from each other. That proved true in 2020. Governors in different states responded to the COVID-19 pandemic at different times and in different ways. Some states, such as California, ordered sweeping shutdowns. Others, such as Florida, took a more targeted approach. Still others, such as South Dakota, dispensed information but had no lockdowns at all. As a result, we can now compare outcomes in different states to test the question no one wants to ask. Did the lockdowns make a difference? Well, yeah, uh, a lot of us want to ask. We say no one wants to ask. I think they mean politicians, policymakers, and people responsible and profiteering from the coronaphobia or coronavirus crisis. No, the rest of us want to know, did you lock us down for your own benefit? Or was there some actual thing to gain in terms of how we dealt with the virus itself. And it turns out, well, here we go. <clears throat> if lockdowns really altered the course of this pandemic, then coronavirus case counts should have clearly dropped whenever and wherever lockdowns took place. The effect should have been obvious, though, with a time lag. It takes time for new coronavirus infections to be officially counted. So we would expect the numbers to plummet as soon as the waiting time was over. How long? New infections should drop on day one and be noticed about 10 or 11 days from the beginning of the lockdown. By day six, the number of people with first symptoms of infection should plummet. Six days is the average time for symptoms to appear. By day nine or 10, far fewer people would be heading to doctors with worsening symptoms. If COVID-19 tests were performed right away, we would expect the positives to drop clearly on day 10 or 11 assuming quick turnarounds on tests. Now, I, I am grateful for the people who have had to crunch these numbers and tease out so many conflating factors that would distort the conclusions because you don't have quick turnarounds on tests that you can assume or rely on at all because the government is controlling the tests. And yet, yet, instead of, inst I mean, we've had this technology for months that we could test Corona as I did here on Facebook Live in Gardenia in March, where it was just a little prick test, prick your finger, a little tiny, tiny droplet of blood on a little test strip and a little saline solution goes across and I was negative for the virus and for the antibodies. But still, for all the work now, now that, they have been able to tease out all of these statistics. To judge from the evidence, the answer is clear. Mandated lockdowns had little effect on the spread of the coronavirus. The charts below show the daily case curves for the United States as a whole and for 13 U.S. states. As in almost every country, we consistently see a steep climb as the virus spreads followed by a transition marked by the gray circles to a flatter curve. At some point, the curves always slope downward, though this wasn't obvious for all states until the summer. And this, is, this has got to be, I mean, you, you can look into these, uh, th these graphs and, and, you know, do, do the actual visual examination for yourself and go, wow, yeah, they're right. The lockdowns didn't work. And the silver lining that I hope comes out of this whole coronavirus crisis is that people learn to not trust government. Now, in some places, you know, they'll never get over it. Like Mark Twain, it's easier to fool someone than convince someone 
that they've been fooled. And in Israel, Netanyahu actually came out. We covered the story yesterday and said, well, since the lockdowns didn't work, we're going to have to lock down harder. And you go, How, what? Like, if it doesn't work, we're going to do more of it? And there's some people who go, like, why does he even have the, the chutzpah to, to say something like that? Because he knows that a certain number of people will go along with it. So one more thing from the story, lockdown's not the cause. Lockdowns can't be the cause of these transitions. In the first place, the transition happened even in places without lockdown orders. See Iowa and Arkansas. And where there were lockdowns, the transitions tended to occur well before the lockdowns could have had any serious effect. The only possible exception are California, which, which on March 19 became the first state to officially lock down in Connecticut, which followed four days later. Even in these places, however, the downward transi transitions probably started before the lockdowns could have altered the curves. The reason is that a one-day turnaround for COVID-19 test results probably wasn't met in either state. The LA Times reported March 30, the turnaround time to be eight days. Yeah, that would make the delay from infection to confirmation at the 10, we assumed were more like 17 days. Six for symptoms to appear, three for them to develop, and eight for test processing. In early April, the Hartford Current reported similar problems with delayed tests, test results in Connecticut. Now, part of the problem with a lie and, and having to dispel a lie. It's really easy to tell a lie. You know, another Mark Twain quote I love, uh, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is just putting on its shoes. Actually, that's my second favorite quote. I suppose my favorite would be Abraham Lincoln. He said, don't believe everything you read on the internet, especially when it's about the coronavirus. And right now we're seeing finally the, 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 the nerds coming in, right? Because it's, it's cool people uh, who are lying and and you're like, oh, come on, look, making it look cool. Like, hey, we got bam, 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 bam. Here's, here's the lie. Go along, get along. Be afraid now. Don't be afraid because I'm going to protect you. And then, you know, a nerd has to come out and explain, well, no, I'm sorry. Actually, according to the numbers, that's not correct. And this guy's a fraud and he's trying to take advantage of you. And, you know, we might be at this point where maybe it's not herd immunity, but, you know, a critical mass of it, where they say, well, 10% of the world population might have been infected. So 90% is at risk. That's not what that means. There's a, there's a lot more to it than that. And it might be that once 10% have it and it kind of peters out, that the, the vulnerable uh, have recovered, that it becomes just another minor virus floating around the great global human Petri dish. But it's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of fucked up. That we live in a world where when authorities say something and they say so many things and they tell so many lies that rather than deconstructing every single one of them, it's easier to say, well, it's government. They're probably lying. We, we have to actively seek alternative authorities to know the truth. And you could go and deconstruct every single lie that government is telling and you would never catch up it's like trying to read every book ever 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 written by by humans more books are being produced every day than you could possibly read more government lies are coming out every day than you could possibly deconstruct and explain and so as a libertarian you know i mean i often get accused well adam you just assume the government is always lying yes and that is a rational position that I have come to from experience and careful examination of our current reality, in which case we live better and understand the world better, understanding and acknowledging and admitting that most of the time government is telling you something that someone is going to profit from. They are lying about something. And the Karina outbreak, certainly no exception.